Now then, how are you doing? I recently visited Coniston Water in the Lake District, the setting for many water speed record attempts, Arthur Ransom's Swallows and Amazons, and home to the Victorian artist and philosopher John Ruskin. While standing on the shoreline, my attention was caught by the edge of the water and the pebbly beach along its banks. What struck me was the way the surface of the water, the reflection of the sky and the submerged pebbles in the shallow water were all superimposed on each other. And it got me to thinking, how would I paint it in watercolour? So I had a little play and this is what I've come up with. A quiet Sunday morning on the banks of Coniston Water the third largest lake in Cumbria. The reflection of the trees on the distant bank are almost mirror-like, ruffled and distorted only slightly by a light surface breeze. The shoreline here is stony. Pebbles of all shapes and sizes lie scattered along its length. There are interesting colours here, not just shades of grey, but look a little more closely at the stones visible in the shallow water. They appear darker in tone as the water gets deeper, but then they also become less visible the further from the edge you look. Where the light reflects off the water, the stones appear lighter too. On top of all this, there are the faint lines of the ripples. This is the scene I like the most, and the one I feel has the greatest potential as a viable composition. Let's paint. I'm going to start by drawing the scene out using a light burnt umber. Well, there are several reasons why I like to do this, but most of all it's because if I draw it out in pencil, I feel like I have to keep within the lines. If I draw it out in burnt umber, it becomes an integral part of the painting, or at least that's the plan. I rather like the fact that the line of the water is high up. I've positioned it roughly one third of the way down the paper. If in doubt, think in thirds. I'm now going to apply a wet in wet wash to the scene. Well, how extensive that wash should be depends upon the individual merits of the composition. On this occasion, I've decided to leave the hillside on the opposite side of the lake untouched. Two colours that go together well when it comes to skies are Prussian blue and French ultramarine. It's a wet in wet wash, so I need to work quickly to avoid any hard lines or backgrounds. I'm extending the wash down into the water as the sky's reflection. Well, it needs to be convincing as a reflection, of course, but absolute mirror-like accuracy isn't necessary.
I've mixed up a light, neutral grey from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber, adding just a hint of alizarin crimson to warm it up slightly. I'm applying this to the beach, leaving highlights for the tops of stones and breaking the area down into small, random shapes. One of the hardest things we have to do in watercolour is generate the random element. Stones on a beach like this come in all shapes and sizes, so it's important not to create too much repetition. Patterns emerge when we least expect them to, so it's important to stay alert. It's also important to avoid too many angular or geometric shapes. Round is good, but shouldn't be overdone, otherwise they won't look natural. For the submerged stones in the shallow water, I've mixed up a blue-grey from the same two colours, French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. What I'm concentrating on are the spaces between the stones, leaving pebble-shaped highlights. Of course, it's important for these marks to be light enough to allow the initial wet-in-wet -wet wash to show through. That way, the initial wash isn't obliterated, it's still there, contributing to the overall effect. The other thing I'm going to do with these marks is to soften them off and blend them in, drawing the light hue outwards into the lake. This is to keep them looking submerged and not like it's something floating on the surface of the water. Once I've established a first flush of submerged stones, it's back to the beach. Now I'm applying a slightly darker version of the grey, breaking the stones down even further to give them, hopefully, more of a three-dimensional shape. I'm meandering, keeping the brush flowing, but trying not to think too hard about where I'm putting it. It's that random element again. New, smaller stones appear out of nowhere. It's important to let them appear and not be quick to paint them out, or the moment can be lost. I'm repeating the process, or a similar version of it, in the shallow water. A slightly darker version of the blue-grey helps to break down the submerged stones a little more. Again, softening those marks off with a damp brush helps to keep the results subtle, and not allow them to essentially break the surface of the water. It's all about breaking things down then. Pebbles need to look natural and repetitive patterns need to be avoided. In watercolour we work from light to dark. Each time I revisit what I've already done I simply make the mix a little richer or darker. It's a constant cycle of applying it then softening it off and blending it in. That way, the build-up of tones occurs gradually, and a certain realism can be maintained. If I start to see a pattern emerging, it's a relatively simple procedure to stop it. Just apply some more brush marks to break it down even further, and break the pattern.
a few extra highlights can easily be created in the shallow water by scrubbing lightly with a damp brush, then lifting out with a piece of tissue. This is very much a simplified version of the scene. I've kept all of my stones the same colour to maintain harmony within the composition. If you look closely at a beach like this though, you will see a wide variety of colours. The other major decision I made was to exclude the tree that was growing on the edge of the water. On this occasion, I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. My background hills are two transparent washers, one overlaid on top of the other, and I've kept ripples on the surface of the lake down to a minimum, in order to reinforce the sense of calm and serenity. Well, I hope you found that demonstration helpful and maybe encourages you to look a little more closely at the water's edge. Until next time, take care.